Welcome back for your third matchup here, just in round one of Modern Mondays at Guardian Games. Uh, we are going to jump in here at game three between blue, black, control, brew, <laughs> and well, advanced spirits. Well, Jeremy said it was blue, black, blue, black garbage, uh, but I know that there's some gargoyles hanging out in here. Um, I'm not sure what the other choices are, but... Yeah. Yeah, we're we about to find out. One and one, and we're gonna see a once upon a time out of the band spirit stack. Have Have you seen that before? I haven't seen that. No, I haven't. Um, does it? Hmm. I feel like it. Just thinking about it right now, I, I feel like it might be awkward with um, your spell and creature count if you're playing Collected Company, which is the reason why you probably play Bant, is that's a way to get some card advantage, because usually the Aether Vial decks aren't great at um, two-for-ones. Yes. Usually Aether Vial is the kind of thing where you end up dumping your hand and then you're out of gas long before you, you know, maybe before you've closed out the game, especially a deck like Spirits that's a little more interactive, a little slower. Yeah, we, we had some John, uh, John Goblin's list uh, last week that was on camera that was playing Once Upon a Time, and I feel like if you're playing an Aether Vial list that is, has a combo finish, it makes sense, because then you can reduce your land count and then dig for the pieces of your combo, but if you're just playing kind of a fair attack you strategy, I'm not sure I like it, but it's always worth testing out things. Oh, sure. I like seeing people try new tech, and as you say, if you're playing a selection deck, you're just digging for your pieces, it's much better than if you're playing a sort of mid-rangey value deck, because it's not actually gaining you card advantage. So we're going to see an opt-in to turn for Jeremy, facing down that Aether Vial. What do we got here? Let's see if I can is Drown in the this. Luck? I love Drown in the Luck. The card's so good. Actually, I think it's a Scalding Turn, but if we do see some Drown in the Luck, I hope we see some Drown in the Luck. I think that's one of the best we're going to peek here. There is Drown. There's Cryptic Command. I see a Logic Knot, an Archmage's Charm, an Opt. Nice. Nice. like that basic. I imagine we've got some Mystic Sanctuaries hanging out in this two-color control deck. I can only hope so. There's a Vantress Gargoyle, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be able to attack unless Matthew has Threshold, and it won't be able to block unless Jeremy has Threshold. I have a suspicion <laughs> it's not far off. So even if Jeremy's not doing any intentional milling, if he just keeps answering what Matthew is throwing down okay. or pulling cards from hand, then he's going to fill his yard reasonably quickly. So it's a threshold check on the attack ability, and it's a card in hands check on the block ability. Interesting. I'm trying to think about the, the play of this card. So you're incentivized to mill your opponent and hold cards to block? Well, it's doing a pretty good wall impersonation right now. Spectral Sailor, you're not getting through. Spectral Sailor can draw some cards, though. That's a fact. Actually, I think one of the... I, yeah, I've seen it a little bit in Spirits, and maybe not every list, but it seems good, especially because right now I, I am of the opinion that... Mausoleum Wonder is a little weak, um, and this might be a good substitute one drop. So we're going to see a Fatal Push attempt on the Spectral Sailor, and that is going to meet a Rattle Chains, attempting to give the Spectral Sailor Hexproof. Jeremy having a think about that. Why do you think we would put the Rattle Chains in through the vial instead of uh, casting it? Uh, it can't be countered that way, for one thing. And also, then, if you end up losing out in the interaction, you can uh, draw a card off Spectral Sailor. We also know that Matthew is holding Spell Queller. Because he picked M it up Many reasons. <laughs> yeah, he has, he has many, many reasons to be violating in that Rattle Chains. Bogdan pointing out that none of the recent 5-0 Spirits lists are running once upon a time, so it is an experiment here from Matthew, and I appreciate seeing that. He is running Collected Company, it looks like, so. Might be a little sad to stir past those, as it were. I'm curious what the creature count is. Usually, when I'm back in standard Coco days, 
it was like 26 to 28 is kind of what you're trying to hit there to have like a, I can't remember the math off the top of my head, but it was something like an, if you had 28 creatures, you were like 86 plus percent chance to hit two. Um, I'm sure we can look that up to get exact numbers, but that's, I would say it's within a couple percentage points of being right. Um, and so usually spirits just running the vials and the cocos that are non-land non-creature and here with the once about a time diluting that to a significant degree more depending on how many copies. Well, I think you also run a s certain number of path to exiles in the main deck, maybe mm. two depending on the amount of reflector mages you're running um, as well. So. That's a good point. Have they gone down in path to exile since running more... Um, oh, Kira Great Glass Spinner's in here. Um, Deputy of Detention. Yeah, um, it's a. I feel like there's a mix of what you run main and sideboard, but there usually are between three and four paths like in the deck, um, Absolutely. just because sometimes you really need that one mana interaction. It's true. So Vantress Gargoyle also notably taps to mill a card, and so Jeremy is setting Matthew up quickly, pushing towards threshold. But I believe now he has it. So that Gargoyle is a uh, live attacker now. I don't really see Jeremy attacking with it anytime soon, no. to be honest. No, but he could. We're going to see a fatal push in the rattle chains. The rattle chains? What are we doing? Okay. We're going to let it go. Bye-bye, rattle chains. We have a vial. Our, our spirits are are flashy enough as, our, as is. We've got the Spellcaller in hand. I agree with that. I don't think Rattle Chains is something you're really protecting with a vial and a Spellcaller. We do have about six minutes left, so Jeremy is going to have to think about uh, perhaps winning this game. And well, he's thinking about <laughs> it right now. Collected, Collected company. company. I would counter that if I had a counter spell. I would too. I think uh, just shutting that down might not be bad. But if you had a counter spell, it's going to eat a Spellcaller. On the other hand, you might want to make him. We'll see what happens. See a spectral sailor, a drag school captain. Oh, That's two captains, good. and you are now captain locked. Oof, Jeremy's seen enough. Drag school captain locking, not where you want to be. Well, well, all right. <laughs> That's a thing that happened. That's a thing that happened. It's a pretty good cocoa. As as much as we were talking about those collected companies being weakened, that one didn't look so bad. No, yeah, uh, <laughs> two drag school captains is really where you want to be on collective companies. Uh, basically, you just have to, your opponent has to have a sweeper or it's got like a, a lot of cryptic to have your team attack ends with a 5-4, but yeah, yeah it's, it kind of lights out for most decks. Yeah, your options there, sweepers, edicts, or cryptic locking, essentially. So I love that everyone's singing along with our theme song. It's a fest <laughs> song. <laughs> it's a hot jam. I am. Um, Thank you, Ian, for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, I had nothing to do with it. Uh, Ian's been a vocalist, and...